going to have some more lessons on the Great Tribulation. And I am so excited over this because if you have heard these before, I try to give something that God wants us to do to obey Him so other people can see what blessings it is to obey the Word of God. You see, what happens is I have been serving Him for over 40 years, almost 50, I guess, and I'm 86 years old. And I have seen the things that we need more than anything else. That is to know Christ as Savior. So you will never be in this awful time of the seven-year tribulation period. And that has burdened my heart more than anything of all my life. And I have lived the abundant life, and I love every minute of it. And I'm here because of you. I want you to know Jesus Christ as Savior. There's nothing else in this life. And now today we're going to be reading from 1 John. And I want to ask everybody that has a Bible to read the book of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, 21 chapters. And then in the back of the book is 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And these are the best lessons for us to learn. You see what happens. We get up in the morning. The first thing we do is eat food for our bodies. We need this for our spiritual life or we will never, ever please God. You should read this book every day. And you should begin with the three 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John at the end of the Bible, and then Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, 21 chapters. Keep reading them until you understand what it means to be a child of God. And I'll see you in heaven. I'm already ready. So today we're going to read just some few. Uh, I want you to read it yourself. So that's the reason I'm giving it to you twice so you can write it down. Because at my age, I forget. So this is... First John, and listen what God teaches us. If we say that we have fellowship, this is First John chapter 1, verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. But if you're not born again, you don't have his pure blood. You see, he's the only person that could give us pure blood. He loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And that lives within us. And then in verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then I want you to have, since we're talking about this, this is the one thing that you need. And I want to give, sometimes I get too fast and don't give it to you twice. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of his divine inheritance as saints of light in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. You read this book, but you have to understand you have to be born again. And this is when the Spirit of God dwells within us. And then in verse 9 now, I'm going to read it to you again. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And our Heavenly Father gives us this book. He gives us everything. Heavenly, divine, eternal promises. Every promise in this book is ours. And that's how I've lived this life. And this is the most exciting thing for me because I have, had to, I have taught a lesson for over 40 years, every week for 40 years. And I enjoy this more every day. And I pray more for all the people. 
I pray, and if you don't know how to pray for that, pray for a hundredfold for Betty Davis. And the most important thing is if you pray and believe, he will do what he says. I have prayed for a hundredfold. I'm on YouTube. You can watch those programs, every one of them, and you can even copy them and send them to other people. You can copy those. And this is how I have lived, and that's what I want you to do. I want you to live that. And if you pray for me every day, you'll be rewarded when you get to heaven. He said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. And now verse 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. You see, people know if we know Christ or not by the way we live because we will not live the way the world does because he plainly teaches us this. He says in chapter 2 of 1 John, My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And in chapter 2, Two, verse 2, and he is the propitiation. That means he's our sacrifice for our sins. And when we sin, we confess that. You cannot sin and enjoy it if you're a child of God. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. I use that every day. Every day. And he says, this is the confidence we have. Now, listen to this. Again, I have to give them to you twice. This is the confidence we have. If we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears, and we shall have the petitions we require of thee. That's why I pray for a hundredfold. Every one of you, listen, we have not because we ask not. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. I've lived the abundant life. I know what the joy is. And then in chapter 2, verse 3, And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. You see, if you don't know him, you, can't, you don't know his commandments. You can't learn them. And in verse 4, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. This is right here, and the truth is not in him. And verse 5, but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Why do I still serve the Lord? Because God loves you. God loves every person in the whole world the same. We're one in his sight. There's no, there's no division. If you know Christ, we are one. He is the head and we're the body. And this is something that the people do not know. And then he says, and the truth is not in him. He says, you're a liar and the truth's not in you. So then in chapter 2, verse 5, but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. You can know I love you because I'm doing this for you. Because I, I don't do this for money. I'm the only person that my... One of my nieces said, Aunt Betty, I've never heard of anybody not taking money for this. I have served the Lord for the glory of God and for all of you that are listening. Verse 6 of 1 John 2. He that saith he abideth in him ought also to walk even as he walked. Now the first thing I want to give to you that you need to know is... Psalm 12, 6. And this is the word of God. This is the word of God, and I want every person that is listening today to know how powerful our word is. And right here it is, Psalm chapter 12, Psalm verse 6. The words of the Lord are pure words pure as silver, tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. This is our life. This is our life. And that's what I want to tell you 
so you can tell others. Because we love each other as a child of God. That's why I'm here. And then he says in verse 7, Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which we have heard from the beginning. Verse 8, again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. We are saints of light. And then in verse 10, he that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness blinded his eyes. And he also says in the Bible that if you hate someone, you are a murderer. And you know what? We're going to have a lesson on chapter 16 of Revelation. And it tells what happens to the people that kill someone. And I want you to listen. Just wait and listen to what happens. And in verse 12, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven, you for his name's sake. And then in verse 13, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. And just think about how much he loves us. The most amazing thing in the whole world. And everybody needs to understand, ye are are of God little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That is chapter 4, verse 6. This is the thing that people has to understand how great our God is. And now I have to give you chapter 2 of 1 John, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time and as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Time is running close, and we must know him. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee and praise thee for these wonderful truths that thou hast given to us. And we thank thee that we know thee. And we have the greatest joy in the world. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And today as we come, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of his divine inheritance as saints of light. This is for the working of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ until we all come into the unity of the faith. And this is how we are to do, love one another as I have loved you. And this is the light of the world, is to shine every day to those around us with the deepest love and the greatest promise that he could give us, to love one another as I have loved you. By this shall all men know you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So I'm asking for a hundredfold today that each one of these people that are listening will say, I want on my knees so I can tell the Lord that I want to know him as my Savior and I want to serve him and honor him all the days of my life. And we will all be in heaven. Everything he has in heaven is ours and it's all pure just like this word of God is pure as silver. And we, every one, are to be pure as he is pure. And we pray that every person will change and there will be no hatred, but only divine love. And all that he has given to us, you will be the richest person. And that's the only way you can have anything that is eternal, is to receive him as our Savior and Lord. 
and I thank thee and praise thee for all the blessings that every person is coming to see to thee today to accept the gift of eternal life. Once again, Jesus Christ is God's love gift to the whole world, and that is the only book in the world, and it is all pure. And I pray that each one will begin today to read the word of God and to obey thee in all things. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So after you get as old as I am, then you're ready for heaven. But today we're going to read Revelation chapter 16. And this is about, of course, the great tribulation. And I'm so thankful that the Lord has let me give this and the many blessings that the people are receiving from that. So we're going to begin in Revelation chapter 16. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Now this is, we're to begin with this one verse. And then we're going to read chapter 2 because this great voice is for every person to begin to understand how great his love is. Now, chapter 16, verse 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome, grievous sore upon the man, the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his name. You see, they have a seven-year period, they have all of the beasts, all of the Antichrist, all satanic powers, and they kill you, and then you're going to find out that they have no love. This is the most amazing thing, and God is love, and how he loves you. And then, when we listen to this, I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 14. I want you to listen to what this, we have to understand, we have to understand that these were all written all those years ago, and God knew they were coming. And it is nothing to people to understand the truth now, because he says at, at chapter 14 of Isaiah, beginning in verse 12. Now, I want you to listen what's going to happen. Everything in this book is, this is the only true book in the world. That's why it's pure as silver. Verse 12 of chapter 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. He wants to be like God but he's the opposite of God. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. That's Satan. This is why you can't listen to anything, but this book is the only true book in the world. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, verse 14. Now this is Isaiah 14, verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds I will be like the Most High. This is what Satan does. He lies. He don't know anything of the truth. And this book is the truth. And then we see in, the, in chapter 16, verse 3. Now, you need to listen to this. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man and every living soul died in the sea. This is how bad these things are. And then now I have to go to Revelation chapter 6 because that's where this begins. Now in chapter 4 of the book of Revelation, you need to read that because that is the only way that you can understand what is happening. We'll be raptured to be with the Lord. We won't be on this earth. 
and you see your family, your parents, and your children. Tell each other how great they are and accept Christ because if you go to an eternal hell and you won't be on this earth and that you never come out of that place after the seven-year tribulation period. So listen at, the, listen at this, what's, what happened to the first people. Revelation chapter 6, this is when the seven-year tribulation started. And verse 3, and when he opened, when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. But now we have to listen to verse 8, uh, chapter 8. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire and cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And now I'm going to read Revelation 16, 4 through 7. Now these are the things that are happening after we are in heaven. It has not anything about us. We won't even be here. We'll be in heaven where we'll have all of these wonderful truths. And then he says in verse 16, verse 4, And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. Now you have to understand this, that this is a true book, and this is going to happen. And I, Verse 5, And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. And verse 6, now listen to this. I, this should be written on all the papers in the, in the whole nation. For they have shed the blood of the saints, that's what we are, saints of light, and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Now you see, they kill them, and then they have to drink the blood of that person. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. You see, once, and think about what he has given to us. All of these truths, he is omnipotent. He's all-knowing. He knows our heart. So we can see through these lessons what he's telling us, and they've already been written through the book. And you have to understand that. And then Revelation chapter 16, verse 8 and 9. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Now this is amazing because you can't even think about how bad that is. It is so sad that people can't believe this. That's why they won't read it. They don't want to hear it. And this is the greatest thing that could happen to anyone. And the fourth angel, verse 8, poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. I don't want any person to have to live through this. And there's no excuse. All we have to do is to obey him and go to heaven. And then in verse 9, and men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. You see, when you sin, let, let me give you Matthew 5, 45. I want you just to listen at what he says for us. Matthew, this is amazing. Every one of these are the beginning of every person's life to see what he can do to tell another person about the love of Christ. Matthew 5, 45. Matthew 5, 45. Now listen at this. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. He loves us all the same. Isn't that the most amazing story? And then 48, listen at this. 
Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, perfect. And then, after we read those, we have to go to the greatest blessing in the world, and they are the most horrible things that could happen. It's chapter 16 of Revelation, verse 10 and 11. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the sea of the beast, and his kingdom was full of beast, of darkness, the beast full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. We know nothing of how bad these things are, and we have to understand that God is giving us these so we can know and not live this. And then verse 11, and blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. Twice repented not. And then we come to chapter 16 again, verse 12. Listen at this. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water there was dried up, that the way of the kings of the earth might be prepared. You see, this is something that everybody needs. And then Revelation 16, verse 13 and 14. And I saw three unclean spirits uh, like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils. You see, you can't tell people when they are safe and saved and when they're not. Working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. And then I'll just begin to start to read the rest of it, but 17 through 21. But listen at this. This is 13 through 14. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And then verse 16, And he gathered them together unto a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven, from the throne, saying, It is done. Verse 18, And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And then 21, And they fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone the weight of a talent. That was 100 pound hail the, that followed the greatest earthquake they had ever had. You see why I'm here? God loves you and I love you. Receive that gift. It is such a blessing to know him. And you know when you know him, nothing else matters. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God, our Heavenly Father, gave us His Son to die instead of us. Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And what we are to do is to love one another, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. I love all of you. I hope to see you in heaven. Thank you for listening to these great truths.